Hi, my name is Zach Parrott of the NIST Boulder AMP Group, and I'll be talking on the simulation of parametrically coupled qubits with Cascade Metal and Pi APR. Parametrically coupled qubits are a platform where we can have many qubits or linear modes sharing a common coupler. This common coupler mediates tunable interaction, allowing for increased connectivity between our modes and high on-off ratio of these interactions. This allows for removal of crosstalk between qubits and faster gates. To break this idea down, we can consider a single mode of this system where we have largely a transmon qubit, which we can compare to a regular tunable transmon. You'll note that it has far milder tunability of its frequency and inharmonicity, and this will make it less susceptible to flux noise. We'll find a suitable operating point upon which we can apply our parametric pumps, which will mediate our interactions. Now, if we consider that uh, qubit mode capacitively coupled to a cavity mode with a given interaction Hamiltonian as shown, we'll have a dispersive shift of the cavity, which will be dependent on the coupling G. If we assume that these are linear coupled oscillators to first order, then this G is a, the difference of the inductive coupling and the capacitive coupling. But our inductive coupling is tunable with the squid flux. Thus, because it's a difference, we'll find an operating point where these interactions will cancel out and we'll have zero static dispersive shift. This gives us an operating point upon which to then apply our parametric drives and they will be the only source of our interactions. But this linear model is incomplete and doesn't fully replicate what is often actually observed in experiment, as we know there would be non other additional nonlinear effects at play. Thus, we seek to have a better basis for more detailed simulation and design of our experiments. To highlight this platform, I'll feature two experiments our group has pursued. One is a parametric qubit-qubit coupling experiment where we have shown fast high fidelity gates and the ability to eliminate the ZZ coupling. And to learn more about this, you can see Jin's talk tomorrow morning. The second experiment is parametric cavity qubit qubit coupling, where we now have two qubits coupled to a cavity mode that also tunes with the coupler. This allows us to protect the qubits from shot noise and enter a parametric shagging regime that can lead to interesting joint state measurements. To learn more about this, you can read Taiwan's paper on the archive. In this talk, I'll explore how using the energy participation ratio, we can get more detailed analysis of these experiments. And this is, shows us a way to design future experiments within the same platform and get all the static interactions out. The energy participation ratio is a method where we can consider a Hamiltonian where all the nonlinear interactions come about from the inclusion of the Josephson junctions in the circuit. Thus, we can write our Hamiltonian as a function of the flux operator across the junction. And then we can do this crossover from the zero point fluctuations of that flux, phi, to the participation ratio, p. This participation ratio describes how much of the energy that is inductively stored in a given eigenmode is localized to the junction J. To break it down a little more specifically, we can get, look at a given Hamiltonian of interest. Here we have a general system of dispersively coupled modes M, where we have our linear portion of our Hamiltonian, and then our nonlinear portion of our Hamiltonian is described by how the qubit modes get dressed, their anharmonicity, and their cross curve coupling between various modes, both qubit and cavities. The unique thing to notice here is that all these parameters can be written as a function of their participation ratios, whether via the first order perturbation theory results shown or using a numerical diagonalization to consider higher order terms. This gives us a unique platform for simulation where we have to find the eigenmode frequencies of the system, see how the fields are distributed and localize the junction. And as long as we can write our Hamiltonian as a function of those, we are all set. Now, how is this done in practice? 
Well, we use Kiskit Metal where we've implemented our group's geometries as custom classes. And this allows us to automate the design and layout and send it over to HFSS where we can find the eigenmode frequencies and use PyEPR to automate the extraction of our relevant parameters. Where we go a step further is now that we have our squid is implemented also as a lumped inductance like the junctions, and we can sweep its variable inductance to map out its mod curve. In the end, we can convert from inductance to flux, assuming a given squid model. Now, how does this actually do? Well, we'll look at the two experiments I highlighted that demonstrate this parametric platform. Here we have two largely transmon qubits with a shared squid coupler that are also capacitively coupled to a cavity for readout. We send this over to HFSS where it's put on a sapphire substrate, the junctions get modeled as lumped inductors, and the metal layers go in as perfect conductor boundary conditions. We can then run the eigenmode simulation, see how the um, energy is localized to the junctions for a given mode, and we're gonna repeat this for each value of the squid inductance. At the end, we can calculate the dress mode frequencies, the anharmonicity and the cross coupling, either via the first order perturbation equation shown before or numerical diagonalization, which we often go to um, as it proves to be more um, accurate compared to our experimental data. So that's the workflow, but how does it actually do? Well, if we look at the, how we compare it to our experimental data. Here on the left panel, we have both qubits mode frequencies where its measured experimental data is shown in the unconnected dots and our simulation is shown in the connected line. We replicate much of the same features of the mode frequencies given uh, assuming a basic squid model. And the anharmonicities are in the ballpark and they show some of the qualitative features of the rise and fall but there's still some work to be done here. But more interestingly is if we get to the heart of this experiment, which is the qubit-qubit interactions. Experimentally, we found that there was an incomplete static cancellation, unlike what was designed for. And this is shown with the black dots here. And this leaves residual ZZ coupling, which is not good for single qubit gates. If we zoom in, we see that our simulation results in the purple line match much of the same features of the experimental data. While they're shifted in flux space slightly, we, we both get to a minima of roughly two megahertz of residual coupling, and the curves have much the same features. Again, the, dis, the difference between our experimental data relies on maybe an improper um, simple squid model, which we're still working towards. But to make a little more sense of why we don't get a full cancellation, we can look more explicitly at the EPR framework. And so here in the GIF, we have the magnitude of the magnetic field being plotted for the left eigenmode. And we can see that in this right branch, even as we go through the squid zero point, we still get we still see energy going through that right junction. And so it's still participating in this mode. This can be seen further if we look at the perturbation theory equations for this coupling, chi, and look at how the, the two dominant parts, this blue and red curves, don't fully line up in their minima. And so we have a minima offset from zero. Now we'll look at our other experiment where we did cavity to qubit couplings. And here, we have our, again, mode frequencies, but now additionally, the cavity mode does share the coupler branch, and so it tunes as well with the squid. The heart of this experiment was the dispersive shift. And so if we look here now at the static dispersive shift, where in the top panel, we have our measured experimental data. In the bottom panel, in our simulations, we replicate much of the same features in terms of the order of magnitude of like, one and three megahertz of coupling for the left and right at zero flux, and that we get a minima for both of them that doesn't quite line up. Now, again, we don't see perfect agreement to our experimental data for our simulation, and in flux space, it's a little offset. This is largely due to that we've had not the most streamlined method of fitting our data, 
to our squid, but it still gives us a good operating point to validate this method for replicating the static features. In summary, the EPR method allows us to replicate key static features of our parametrically coupled circuits. And we can estimate the parametric coupling strength that would be applied on top via the slope of the mode frequencies lines. This shows that we can use the EPR method where and inductively sweeping the squid to design future experiments and better optimize the static cancellation points, which allow us to have greater control with our parametric tones on top. With that, I'd like to thank the AMP group and highlight Jin's talk tomorrow, which will go over more detail of the first experiment discussed.